going to prison, Fairyville prison now for about 27 years, and can't do as much as I used to do out there, but we got, they've got some chaplains out there. In fact, Chaplain Butler is going to be with us Saturday night next month. The Chaplain Harris, he's one of those old-time Pentecostal, love God, get down, fired up preachers. And, yeah. and so just ask him if he would just kind of share today. I like to do that every once in a while. Just get some these good outsiders to come in. And from where they came from, they can, it's all the same gospel. They can give us what they've got. We can show them what we got and just glorify the body of Christ. Before he comes up, turn to one next to you. He says, I'm sure glad I'm, I'm here today. And I, I'm glad that the praise of worship is getting me fired up. And I'm glad that I get to hear the word of God. Amen, amen. Turn that one next to you and tell them that. I'm glad I get to hear the word of God. All right, let's give Chaplain Harris a welcome as he comes up and opens the word of God. called out ones. It's great to be among you today. You know, uh, Pastor Walt called and and uh, I, he did catch up with me finally and and I said, well, I come. And I, and I was quick to say yes this time because the last time he called me, I was quick to say no. And about an hour afterwards, my father, God, chastised me. <laughs> and he said uh, to me, you know, you didn't ask me first. <laughs> I, but I was going to, I asked him afterwards, after I'd said no. But, so I said, well, that won't happen again. I'll go where you ask me to go, and I'll do what you ask me to do. And so I'm thankful to be here this morning. I'm thankful to be amongst you, Amen. to have an opportunity to, to worship God with you and to praise him and to lift him up with you. And I was noticing, I was wondering about, this is my wife right here, Ramy. Hi. 30, 33 years, is that right, 33? We've been together. And I know somebody must have been praying for me because before I got saved, I said, Lord, give me a woman that will put up with me. Now, I wasn't even saved then. Well, it's been 33 years and she's still putting up with me. So I thank God for that. We have two children and they're grown and they're doing well. And I was raised up in the Pentecostal church, but it was a mixed bag with us because depending on where my great-grandmother wanted to go that day, we might have went to the Methodist church, we went to the Baptist church, wherever she just had her mind made up to go. We went to church though, that was the thing, and that's kind of my mindset. I like to go to church. I am not prejudiced against any denomination except those that don't name the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, now, now, I, I, I won't go there unless I'm going there to preach. <laughs> if they want me to preach in their presence and talk to them about Jesus, I will. But uh, today, I was wondering, well, what would I talk to you about today? And something that's been on my heart for a month or so, a couple of months, and I'm saying, well, I didn't have, I said, well, Lord, what are you going to have me to preach and uh, talk about? And the subject that I'm dealing with and dealing with most often right now is prayer. And I was watching you all and you're praying and you're talking about prayer and your excitement about prayer and communing with God. And he says, I was worried, you know, what am I going to talk to you about? Well, I'm not going to give you any doc, uh, a doctrinal thesis on prayer. I'm just going to talk to you about praying. Amen. Amen. Just as 
Christ did to his disciples when they asked him to, show, to teach him how to pray. And this is referenced in Matthew, the 11th chapter, and in Luke, I mean Matthew, the 6th chapter, and Luke, the 11th chapter. But before we get started, let's do what I'm going to talk about. Let's pray. <laughs> Father God, we are your people, Father. And just as Moses said, I don't want to go anywhere, Father God, unless you go. Because these are your people. And I don't want to talk to your people, and I have nothing to say to your people. Just as Solomon said, unless it is what you want me to say. I need your wisdom and your knowledge and your understanding. Because they are your people. We are here today, Father, because we are your people. You have called us, Father, out of darkness into your marvelous light. So we are here today, Father, to humble ourselves before you, Father God, and receive of you the blessings that only you can provide for us, Father. And we come, Father God, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who blessed us, Father God, with this inheritance, Father, through his death, burial, and resurrection, Father God. We have been blessed, Father God, and since we have tasted, Father, and know that it is good, we are here so that we might taste even more. That we might receive from you, Father, that which will cause us to grow into the child that you would have us to be, Father, into the servant that you desire us to be, into that worker, Father God, doing what it is you desire of us, so that we will be like our brother Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, our Savior, doing what it is you say and only doing what you do. That is why we are here, Father, so that you be glorified today. We ask that you pour out your precious Holy Spirit on us today, Father, that you would open up our hearts, open up our ears, open up our eyes, Father, so that we will respond like Job today, Father God. Now I see. Help us to see, Father God. Yeah. Only you can do that. See the truth of who you are. Come to know you as you have revealed yourself to us yeah. in your word. And Father God, we thank you and give you all the honor and all the glory and all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's go first to Matthew The sixth chapter, and the fifth verse, and it says, and when you pray, you should not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. But surely I say to you that they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in, secret, in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetition as the heathens do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. In this manner, therefore, pray. And then it gives you the Lord's Prayer, as we say. But I want to go over to, now, to Luke, the 11th chapter.
And we'll start there at the first verse. Now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. Then drop down to the fifth verse. And he says to them, which of you shall have a friend and you go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves for a friend of mine has come to me on his journey and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within and say, do not trouble me. The door is now shut and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give you, give to you. I say to you, though he will not rise and give to, give to him because he is his friend, yet, I be, yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find, knock, and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be open. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Amen. These were words, I read these words, the ones I read, as a means of showing you how Christ encouraged us to look at our prayer life. See, we, we jump quickly on the how to pray, but we don't deal a lot with how we come to the throne and what our expectations are when we come, are we by calling, first of all, children of God? You notice in Matthew, he kept saying, your father, your father, your father, your father. Because if you deny anything that the Bible says about God and about Jesus Christ, then are you his child? And yet you come to him and ask him for blessings on your life, but yet you don't recognize him for who he says he are, and he says we must worship him in spirit and in truth. And prayer is a part of your worship. It is a part of your recognition of who he is. That is why you come, because of who he has said he is to you. And the only way that you know what he is to you is because of what he has revealed in his word. Amen. So if you deny in anything of him, and I say this to the inmate sometimes, I said, if you call God a liar and then you come to his face and you want him to do something for you, but let that lie stand, well, you love me anyway, Lord. And you expect a blessing. You expect him to answer you, but your mind isn't right. Your perspective isn't right. How you see God isn't the way that pleases him. And yet, you want to be pleased by him. You want him to do something for you, but you don't want to do what he says. You don't want to live in obedience to him. You don't want to walk in the light. You want to play in the darkness. 
You want to straddle the fence, and when things get hot on the fence, you come crying to God. And then you get all holy and you get down on your knees. You get all religious. You get to rolling the beads in your hand. You get to praying 10 times a day. You get to begging God. But if you had gone to God before that, my grandmother said to me once, I came home after a fight. I was, been, I was crying, been in a fight. Didn't go well with me. And she said something and it stuck with me all my life. She said, if you had thought about it, you would have cried before you went, and you wouldn't be crying now. See, the thing we need to come to that place in our lives is that we stay on our knees all the time. The Bible says we should always pray on all occasions. Turn to Ephesians 6.18. I love this verse because it talks to you first about the armor of God. And we get all wrapped up in getting the armor right. You know, we get all wrapped up in keeping it shined and, and keeping the dents out of it. But the thing is, to use what it is that God has given you takes prayer. You need prayer, because you need God's help. Amen. So that you will be able to walk in that righteousness. Amen. To walk in that faith. Amen. To be girded up. That's right. To walk in the gospel of peace. You need his might and his power. Amen. You need him to represent you. Just as you want to represent him, you need him to go before you. You need to be like Moses was when he talked to, when, when, when they had sinned and God said, man, these are some stiff neck folks. <laughs> Told them that in Exodus 33. Said, this is a stiff neck people and I'm not going with you. I'm going to give you the promised land.